Hey all, how's it going? Hope you're well in this crazy time. I want to show you this new Merida E160 Limited that I've just received. It's just about to be released by Merida. And I guess you could call it the entry level to their really highly rated and popular E160 that they bought out last year. Now it's got an aluminium frame, 29 a front and 27.5 rear with a Shimano E8000 motor. Let's take a bit of a look around it. So first look, we'll go for a quick cheeky little ride. We're allowed to exercise once in a day in the UK. So I'll just pop my GoPro on, go for a really basic cruise just on fire roads. And um, I will bring out a full review of this bike as soon as I possibly can. Originally, Merida launched a carbon version of this bike last year. This new model, called the E160 Limited Edition, was developed to broaden the price range of Merida's e-enduro bikes. The geometry is virtually identical to that of the higher priced carbon E160, nothing too radical, 65.5 degree head angle, short chain stays at 439mm and a mixed tyre size 29er at the front with a 27.5 at the rear with a slightly larger tyre. But the biggest difference is it's got the aluminium frame um, and it's kind of this hydroform frame so it actually from here looks really seamless. There are a couple of weld joins that you can just notice more so down towards the bottom. So if I just move down this kind of way here, you can notice a little weld joint there, but honestly, aluminium, Merida aluminium, you, I don't think you are gonna notice the difference in the frame between this aluminium model and their more expensive carbon model. And I think the green and black work really well on this frame. It's uh, the same frame as I just mentioned as the E160, so the same geometry. Um, they've called this one the E160 Limited. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what's limited about it. I don't know if it's just gonna be around for a certain amount of time, I'll have to ask Merida. But this one is four and a half thousand pounds, and it is the E8000 based Shimano motor. So yeah, the frame looks really neat in this green and black. I love the contrast. The previous Merida I rode was the E140, which was um, a really lively bike and it is actually the same frame as this here. Uh, but that was just like an all kind of gray black design. It didn't really, I don't know, it just looked a bit dull and boring, but this in contrast looks I think it's really nice. I'll just step back so you can see that a little bit better. Based on the Shimano E8000 motor, which uh, has got 70 Newton meters of torque, not the newest motor, but that motor is a good performer. It is not the most powerful motor, but it's quite a natural feeling motor. Um, I like it, it's solid. It, it just works really well. And it's got the 504 watt hour integrated battery in the down tube just there and it's popped on with this rubber kind of plate here that just dampens down any stones and stuff that hit it. And it's got the super ergonomic E7000 controllers. It's just one of those things that you don't even have to think about changing gear. You just pop your changing mode, sorry, you just pop your finger down and it's just super easy. I really like that minimalist design. These brakes, I've had a couple of really small kind of um, rides on it. These brakes I really like. They're just basic Shimano uh, brakes, but they, um, when I say basic, the lower end Shimano brake, it's the MT501. And, uh, and it, it works ridiculously well. I'm super surprised. In fact, these are better than some of the brakes, the higher end brakes that I've used from some other brands. Nice, neat little E7000 display. It's only black and white, but doesn't bother me at all. It's quite discreet, quite low profile. So when you're kind of in the cockpit area, it's just quite nice. I'm always a fan of like minimalist design and a small kind of screen as possible. Personal preference for me, a lot of people are different. Shimano SLX shifters. Um, which again just work brilliantly and I love on Shimano you can uh, downshift with this uh, little um, or upshift with this little kind of thumb or index finger lever just there. Um, it's, it's just a really neat system. I'm, I'm a massive fan of these Shimano gears. 
the on button just on the top here. Uh, gone are the days where you have to reach really far under the down tubes to turn bikes on. They're just in a nice position just there. This is an XL. It's got quite a short stem at 40 mil for the geometry. It's not the longest bike. It's 480 mil in reach. This has got, in terms of suspension, one of the things that I will call out is the, the rear shock is, is pretty good. It's a super deluxe select with a little piggyback. Um, but the front is a Rock Shocks 35. It's not even a like Lyric Select. So it's the budget fork, like the lowest model that Rock Shocks do. So honestly, in terms of performance, I'll be interested to see what it's like. Probably will suit quite a lot of riding and quite a lot of people, but just to know it is the most budget fork that you can get. It's a little bit disappointing on a four and a half grand bike to have a, a really budget fork. I would have liked to have seen like a Lyric Select on there, something a bit more premium. Um, to match the rest of the spec, uh, the drivetrain, hello cat. The drivetrain is, um, I think it's all SLX. Might be an XT rear mech, yeah, XT rear mech. And it comes with pretty decent tires, Minion DHR and a Maxxis Asagai on the front. So decent tires, rims are probably kind of like lower cost entry level rims, but on the whole, I mean, you're getting the geometry, the design, the integration of the much more expensive carbon-based bikes. And don't forget the E160, um, I think it's a 9,000, costs nine and a half grand. So you're getting all of that same integration and geometry in a package that's less than half that price and you could if you wanted to or if you needed to get this bike as a base and then in three months six months a year potentially swap out you know maybe that fork for something that's a little bit more burly you might find that the fork actually works quite well for the majority of trail base riding i think it's just like the revelation damper so it's not like the latest damper the previous gen revelation damper that's in there uh feels okay honestly for what i've been riding but it'd be interesting to see how it holds up in i don't know some bike park stuff some more demanding stuff uh, i'll let you know in the review super deluxe rear shock boss is there for bottle mount comes with this um dropper post and on the underside of the saddle it has a place to stash tools just in there. It's quite neat. I really like um, when designers think about these little things that on the trail come in really handy. You can just pop your little toolkit just under there, just in there. It's pretty cool. One of the things that I like is the way they've integrated the cable for the shifter in the actual handlebar. So it kind of goes inside and then just pops out just, just down here. It just kind of declutters the front a little bit. Nice, nice and neat. So we'll go for a really chilled little ride just on my local fire roads. I'll just talk a little bit more about the bike and the setup and subscribe because a full review will be coming soon, as soon as we're allowed out. So let's go and hit, not the trails, some fire roads, get the daily exercise in and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about the bike. I've got to say, we are so lucky with the weather and I know we were all having to spend a lot of time indoors at the moment that's you know sucks but we got to do it it's so nice to be able to come out and actually really appreciate and enjoy the kind of time that you get outside and this weather that a lot of Europe are going through right now is just stunning the cockpit just feels good uh, layout like I said just in the in my back garden just just like all makes sense all makes sense i like it the tire on the front is um, a pretty heavy tire in fact the bike is quite heavy this is an xl it does have tubes in but i weighed it with uh without pedals and without the little multi-tool that you get and it weighed 24 just over weighed just over 24 kilos so it's heavy-ish on the heavy side you could lose a few hundred grams by uh removing the tubes 
24 kilos in XL. If you're on a medium or large, take a, you know, another few hundred grams off maybe. So yeah, neat little E7000 controller. I did post a video on my Instagram, by the way. Uh, follow me if you want to see e-bike content on Rob, Rob Rides EMTB on Instagram. And a lot of people commented on the motor noise. It is always the case when you're recording that the motor sounds way louder than it does in real life because the GoPros and the mics pick up that frequency. So don't pay too much attention to the motor noise. I know it's easier said than done because you can always hear it, but it's not massively distracting. You can always notice it, but it's... Now I'm over the uh, 25 kilometer an hour limit, it's gone. And by the way, this actually feels easier to pedal over the 25 mile an hour limit than I remember the Shimano motors feeling before. So maybe they've refined some of the build process, uh, some of the internal components as manufacturers tend to do over the years, but I don't know, I'm, I'm just speculating there. Uh, but yeah, the bike geometry, 480 mil reach i'm six foot three one meter 91 it's not super long i would probably put just to give me a little bit more space up the front maybe a 45 or 50 mil stem maybe but i like the layout it's pretty clean a lot of people ask me is it worth going for the carbon version of a particular bike over an aluminium version um like the carbon bikes you tend to save maybe four, 500 grams, uh, but they'll cost you maybe 700 to 1,000 pounds more. Honestly, I probably could not notice if I was riding a carbon bike versus an aluminium bike from the same manufacturer and a manufacturer of a, you know, a reputable manufacturer of mountain bikes. Honestly, I don't think you could tell riding it. Aesthetically, they're slightly different because you get uh, seamless kind of joins and things, and they've tried to do that on this. <sighs> Honestly, I like carbon because I like the look of it and I like the weight savings. It's probably a really poor purchase choice because the aluminium bikes, they perform so well. And unless you're at like an elite level, bike brands will say, you know, we've looked at the stiffness of certain areas of the bike and had engineers work out that that can flex slightly. Unless you're pff, the top 0.1%, you're not really going to notice that. So there's nothing wrong with aluminium bikes at all. In fact, it's probably better to get an aluminium bike and pay for upgrades of wheels, tyres if the bike comes with rubbish tyres. This one doesn't. Um, and other stuff, training, fitness, that kind of stuff over a carbon bike. That being said, I do buy carbon bikes. So we like buying flash stuff. So in terms of performance, are you gonna notice a difference? I very much doubt it. You'll notice the difference on your wallet though. So this is my third ride on the bike now. I'm taking it super easy. You're not even wearing any knee pads or anything because the time that we're in, so. Um, yeah, my third ride, and actually, uh, I've got to say, I've connected with it pretty quickly. I really enjoyed the E140. If you've seen the review that I did on that one, if you haven't, it's a couple of months ago, and that is the same frame, but sure to travel. Um, and that felt really good. You know, I thought they did a brilliant job with that. And for a lot of people, the 140 is a brilliant choice, but if you want something with a little bit more travel, the 160 is, uh, you know, extra travel, you get a little bit more comfort. They just feel good to ride and you get that extra little bit of travel to... For me, it gives me that little bit of confidence when I'm uh, riding on unexpected stuff or I don't know, I just like... I think the 160 travel platform for the majority of riders is kind of that sweet spot between not being overbite like a 180 saying that i do ride a keneva i really like that uh, and having enough travel to pretty much 
have a one bike can take you anywhere. So as a first couple of rides on just cross country stuff, nothing technical or gnarly, I do like the bike. It's four and a half grand. In that price point, you've got the choice of quite a lot of bikes actually. So while well, four and a half grand is a lot of money to spend on a mountain bike, uh, I like it, I've got to say. I do like the bike. Um, I think they've done a great job with the integration. It looks neat. The colorway is nice on this. I didn't really like the, just the black one that they'd sent me last time. I just thought it looked a little bit dull. Uh, this one looks just, just looks a bit meaner. Geometry's good. I would like it to be a little bit longer. I wish they did an XXL, but um, they don't. That's the only thing I think geometry wise. For me, and this kind of riding that I do, I would like to change. So there you go, really quick first look at this new Merida E160 Limited aluminium version, four and a half grand, 160 mil travel, sorted little trail enduro bike. Um, pretty capable. It's not a full review. Stay tuned, subscribe, because I'll bring out a full review as soon as I can. And I'll bring out weekly e-bike videos. So I will catch up with you all soon. Take care, bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.